In this video, I'm going to introduce buttons, specifically the text button. I have a text button right here. The text says blink. When I click on it, I blink. I can do it while I'm running too. So this is the first time that we're using local scripts. Local scripts run on the player's device, like on their phone or on their computer, not on the Roblox server. So we're also going to learn about remote events so we can talk between the client and the server. Right, that'd be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and get started with that. All right, here's an empty base plate. Let's go over to the Explorer, go down to Starter GUI. GUI means Graphical User Interface. I call it a GUI because GUI is more fun to say. So Starter GUI plus sign Screen GUI. If you don't see it, you can do your S-C-R-E. There it is, Screen GUI. Screen GUI covers the entire screen. Right, and then you could put components on it. So let's do that. Let's go to Screen GUI and then hit the plus text button. All right, let's change this text button to blink button. Sweet. If you drag this button down, you can find the halfway point point by a green line, a green dotted line that goes across. I'm not going to spend too much time on all of the properties. I'm just going to introduce a few each video. That way, it's not as boring. So I have our blink button. One thing I am going to do is change the background color three on my blink button. Hit that little square. Pick a color that you like. All right, green. It looks terrible, but I like it. And let's go down to the section in the properties that says text. And under text, you'll see font. Font is the way you write the characters. All right, so I'll do bangers. I like bangers. Boom. You can see the text change, but that's tiny little text. That's not going to work. But here we have text. We might as well change it. We're here, right? We'll change it to blink. Ah, I spelled it wrong. Blink. But it's still tiny. Let's fix it. Go down a little more. A little more. You'll see text scaled and text size. Text size, you could use a font size like, say, 25. I changed it from 14 to 25. It got bigger. But I think today what I'm going to do is text scaled. Text scaled. Roblox just finds a font that fits inside the component nicely. And sometimes it doesn't quite work, but that time it did. So let's go with that. And then we'll have blink button under the blink button in the Explorer. Hit the plus sign, add a local script, right? Runs on the client. Let's change the local script to blink loc, right? So local scripts can't talk directly to server scripts. Remember that. I'm going to make this a little bigger. We're going to get a reference to our button, local btn script.parent. We're going to make a function, local function on click. And then we'll do a little printout, say I was clicked. I was clicked. And down here, we're going to get our button. And the activated event is what we want. That way, if somebody's playing on a phone and they touch the screen on the but the button on the screen, that's going to hit the activated. Or if we just click on it with our mouse, if you're playing on a desktop, that's going to be activated, right? And then we'll do our on click, right? So when we activate our button, on click is going to be fire going to be called. That's going to fire off. Let's do it. Let's hit play button. Go to view output, and we'll make this bigger. Here it goes. Whew, that was exciting. I was clicked. Sweet. And it says client, right? Not server. Remember that. Let's go ahead and turn this off and make our little guy jump forward. So remember, we're in the local script. I keep saying that over and over, so remember it. I can get the player service in the local script, same as, the, same as on the server side. So I'm going to do game get service, players. That keeps track of players. And then with the player service, I'm going to get a player and I'm going to do it by saying players.local player. This will not work on a server script, only a local script, right? Because it's a client script. It knows who the local player is and then it'll put it in here. Then once we get the player, I'm going to make this, I'm going to get rid of that so we have more room. I want to get the character, right? Because on the character, we have the humanoid root part. On the humanoid root part, we have the C frame. With the C frame, we can move things. Right, so we'll say local char, it's a variable for the character. We'll say player.character. 
right? And that's going to get the character from the player, but character sometimes isn't there, like on startup or on death, things like that. So what we need to do is we need to do this little crazy statement. We'll say, or player dot character added. Notice this is an event. And we'll say colon wait. And what's, that, what's going to happen here is if this is nil, if there's nothing there, we're going to jump over here because it's an or. And it's going to check this. And it's going to say, hey, wait until the character is added. When the character is added, a value will be here. This char is going to get a value. Pretty crazy. You're going to see that every. You're going to see that a lot in Roblox. All right. The character will have a humanoid root part. So we'll say char. Wait for child. Humanoid root part. Make sure you spell that right. Right. The humanoid root part keeps track of the player's uh, position and orientation through a C frame. Oh, we don't need another line. Uh, another local. What we need is the HRPs. C frame. So the C frame is the actual data type that keeps track of the uh, location and orientation that's on the humanoid root part. We're going to get our old humanoid root part C frame. That's where our old position and where we're looking. Whoops, this is a plus sign. Then we're going to add a vector to move it forward instantly. So how do we do that? Well, we'll get the humanoid root part C frame. And there's this really cool vector. C frames are hard. But you should remember this one called look vector. And that is the direction you're looking in. If it's on a part, it's the front of the part. But if it's on a player, it's the direction you're looking at. It's only of length one. It's a unit vector. So we have to multiply it by how far we want to go. All right? That's pretty cool. Order of operation is we'll do multiplication first. This is going to be a vector of length 100. Then we're going to add it to the C frame pushing us forward 100 studs. Let's try it. Blink. Sweet. That worked. And let's just look for errors. No errors. Awesome. Let's go to our test server because we're like, hey, we did that locally. What do other players see? Do they see us going forward? Good question. Let's hit the start button. I will pause this because it's going to take like five minutes with my old computer. All right, there we go. We got our little guy. This is the guy on the left. We're going to look look at this one here on the right. I'm going to blink on the left, and he's going to watch him blink forward. Right, so let's go there. We saw him kind of jump up, right? So it wasn't an instantaneous response from the blink. That's because I did it on my client side for this guy. It went to the server, and then the server updated this guy's client side, saying, hey, look what happened. Uh, but it's fine. You can move your player around with local scripts, not other players. But locally, you're moving your player anyway with your keyboard, right? So it is feasible. No problem. You could stop now if that's all you want. But let's go ahead and take a look at the server side code for this. Do our little cleanup. Yep, leave, clean up. Get rid of it all. And how do I talk to the server? I said that I couldn't talk to the server through the client, not directly, but I can use a remote event. That is a gateway. So we'll go to replicated storage, replicated storage, client and server can see replicated storage, right? So it's great for stuff like remote events. Hit this plus sign, remote event, and we'll call this blink re. All right, now I'm not going to need this player stuff anymore. I'm going to delete it right now. I'm on the local script, right? We only have one script right now. I'm going to delete the player stuff. We're going to get an error. Don't worry, we're going to fix it. I want to get a, a reference to replicated storage. I'll just call it RS. I'll say game get service replicated storage. In replicated storage, I want to get a blink. R E. You can name this whatever you like. I just made it lowercase b to differentiate. Um, we're going to get our replicated storage reference. Wait for child, just in case on startup, it's not quite ready yet. Speech quote, blank R E. This, whoops, must be spelled the same as this. 
So in replicated storage, we are going to look for this guy. If it's not there or if it's spelled wrong, we're going to get an infinite yield error right here because we're going to wait for a child that doesn't exist. All right, that's pretty cool. Now, in our Blink RE, we can fire a server event, right? And we don't have to pass anything over, but I'm going to, just to show you uh, that you can pass other parameters, I'm going to send a little message saying, hi from client. Like I said, you don't have to do this. This is just for educational purposes, only outside the scope of the blank. And then I'll send 42 just to send two parameters. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this. We're going to delete it. Copy and delete. Cut. That does that, right? Copy and delete. We're going to go over to our server script service, hit the plus sign, add a script. Now you'll notice there's a little face on that script. There's not a little face on that script. This is a server script, local script. Just one more time going over it. And I'm going to call this blink. We could do blink S V R for server. And get rid of that. We're going to make a, I'm going to make a function, but I'm going to go a few lines down because I'm going to need some variables up there at line one and line two. So local function. I'm just going to call this blink. This is where we're going to get our stuff from our remote event. First thing we're going to get is the player. If we don't send it, it's coming over no matter what, because it came from the client it says, Hey, this is coming from me. So you're going to get a player. We're also going to get the message that we sent the high from client. And then we're going to get our number, our 42. And we can print that stuff out. We can say player equals player dot name print message equals and it was what msg msg and then we'll do the number too number equals num cool and then remember i copied those lines of code that was in the in the client script where we're doing our blink i'll just paste them right in there if you don't have them go back and get them and then also oh go back to blink loc and let's be lazy copy these two lines of code where we access our remote event in replicated storage, go to our blink server, paste it. Look at that. That's coming out pretty quickly. And then I'm going to get my blink RE. And then when they do the fire client or fire server, we're going to do an on server event. We're looking for the server event. We're going to connect it to blink. We don't need any, parameters passed in here, we're going to get that stuff. We're going to get the player, the message and all that. Let's play it. Let's actually just play it right from the test server. All right, here we go. There's my little left guy. He's going to be the blinker and he's going to watch him blink on the right. Boom. Instant. That's pretty cool, huh? And then maybe we could turn around and watch him blink. Ah, oh, I was on the wrong keys. And let's go ahead and watch him blink. Boom. Ah, oh, look at that. He blinked that way. So you're going to blink in the direction that you're looking. I thought that was pretty cool. We don't have any errors. I'll check real quick. View. And then, oh, it's too hard to see. Yeah, no output errors. This is client errors. So it's going to be limited. Let's go ahead and clean up. I think you just have to trust me on that one. It worked out. Let's go ahead and add a sound. Let's go to our home toolbox, audio, under the marketplace. There is ironically a blink sound. And oh, this is the one that I did in the video. Cool, drag it into the workspace, close this, get it a blink. I'm gonna put it on my, I'm gonna put it locally. I'm gonna put it on my local script, my blink loc, right? So it's not gonna be playing in the workspace, it's gonna be playing on my character. Let's go to blink loc script. Here we're gonna get a reference to our sound. SND, say script. And we'll do a wait for child because sometimes sounds are slow to start up. And then blink. But just be careful, that's gotta be spelled the same as that, or you're gonna get an infinite yield error again. I'm gonna get rid of these two extra lines. And then on on click, let's go ahead and get sound play. And then I want to wait a little bit before I jump. If you look on blink, 
go down to the properties, you'll see this uh, time length is grayed out because you can't change it, 1.985. I played around with the sound and I'm gonna wait the sound time length times 0.70. So I'm gonna let 70% of the time length of the sound play before I jump. I just played around with that, right? It's a little bit of a wait. I didn't want to jump and then have the sound play. So we could go ahead and try that. Uh, is everything there? I think so, I think so. Cool. Sweet, look for errors, view, output. Oh, we still have our messages in there. That's all right. Uh, oh, one more thing I wanna show you. Let's take a look at this starter GUI, right? Why does it say starter GUI? Is it because I'm a beginner? No, it's not because I'm a beginner. When I start, this GUI is gonna be copied to my player. It's gonna be cloned to the player. So on startup, that's why it says starter GUI, if we go to the player service, open it up, and then here's our player. Remember our leader stats was in here too. Ah, the starter GUI becomes the player GUI. If we open this up, screen GUI, blink button, holy cow, blink loke, and then there's our blink sound. So it's all in the player. And we will need to know this if we wanna change our GUI dynamically on individual players as they're playing. That's kind of advanced. 